As if losing seven of the last eight in this series were not enough motivation for Michigan. They had last season's bitter taste in their mouth, and we are ready for kickoff. Bob Wischusen alongside Brock York. Allison Williams down on the field. Brock, this is what college football is all about. Sign me up. You want offense? You want lots of points? Go watch the Big 12 later today. You want some defense? You want some violence? You want some incredible emotion? Stay tuned for the next three hours. Michigan won the toss, deferred to the second half. They'll put their defense on the field to start. R.J. Shelton deep to receive the opening kick. And it will come out to the 25-yard line. And just in case you forgot what this rivalry was all about, here it is. Sometimes you get your little brother excited when you're playing basketball and stuff. You let him get the lead. And then you just come back and take it back. Do you think of Michigan State as your little brother? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> But just remember, pride comes before the fall. So they want to mock us all they want to mock us. I'm telling them, it's not over. So they can print all that crap all they want all over their locker room. It's not over. It'll never be over here. We'll be a coach here for a long time. It's not over. It's just starting. It's just starting. Truer words were never spoken by Mark D'Antonio as his team has won seven of the last eight meetings in this rivalry game. And they'll start with the football against the nation's Statistically speaking, best defense, and that defensive front stacks up L.J. Scott on first down. Now, we were wondering which quarterback would start, Brian Lewerke or Tyler O'Connor. Well, it is Tyler O'Connor that gets the start for the Spartans. And Mark D'Antonio told us yesterday it was all about his ability to protect himself. If he could move, he's been battling a lower extremity injury. If he could move and protect himself, he was going to play ahead of the redshirt freshman. You see right there, Brian. Lewerke, who started the last two games. I like this move. Rivalry game, fifth-year senior. He's stuck around in this program. It'll be his game today. L.J. Scott. It'll be third down and eight. Allison? Well, guys, I talked to Mark D'Antonio right before we kicked things off, and he told me it would be Tyler O'Connor. The reason why he was moving around well during warm-ups, and Brock, you saw him as well. He didn't seem to be in any sort of pain. All they've said is that he had a lower leg injury, but he's not wearing any sort of brace or protective equipment at all. D'Antonio happy with what he saw, so he's going back to his redshirt senior. Not happy with the first two plays, putting him in third and eight, right into the teeth of the very best defense in college football, and right into their greatest strength, just 12 third down conversions against in seven games. 12 for 92 opponents against Michigan on third down. They rush four. O'Connor finds a man underneath. The 13th third down conversion this season for an opponent. And it's L.J. Scott that moves the chains. A gain of 12. One thing that will stand out to you on a college football Saturday with these two foes is how much it's about matchups. It's NFL-esque. It's creating my one-on-one, -on -one and you got to go out and win it. And there's not many advantages for Sparty today on the perimeter. But there is with L.J. Scott, and you see it right there. And that's one-on-one -on -one with Ben Gideon. That was two-man defensively for Michigan, a one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker in a very rare third-down conversion. Six offensive linemen and two tight ends as the Spartans line up to play in a phone booth on first and ten. Big boy football and an eight yard gain by L.J. Scott with Prescott line the fullback helping to pave the way as Delano Hill came up to help on the stop. It's pretty amazing what a first down can do especially on third and eight and if I'm Michigan State today and I'm offensive coordinator Dave Warner I'm staying at base personnel as much as I can and I'm running right at Jabril Peppers big time player top five on Mel Kuyper's big board phenomenal athlete but he's 205 pounds playing strong side linebacker and he's at his best in space hitting creases smacking quarterbacks in the face like that power run run right at number five and out. RJ Shelton gets a crease gets to the sideline it's another Spartan first down But once again, it's base personnel, so you see Jabril Peppers up on the line of scrimmage in a base front and trying to get RJ, their most dynamic perimeter player, out into space. You fake that inside dive, and I'll tell you right now, I'm not seeing this in four or five games for Michigan. Only Colorado got them on their heels. That early third and eight conversion was critical 
to get some momentum here on this drive and Michigan very stagnant defensively. Very little movement, very little stunts, very little pressure here in the opening series for them defensively. Eighth play of this opening drive. Another straight ahead run. There goes LJ Scott again. Right at the line to gain for another Michigan State first down and without measurement they say it's a 10 yard game. And here's the biggest key if you're going to run this power system and you're going to see it for Michigan on the other side. It is this movement. You have got to create movement so your offensive linemen can pull around. And Michigan the last three weeks has been driving those offensive linemen into the backfield. They have been owning that point of attack. And Michigan State conversely has had some challenges against no matter who they play. That's tremendous movement to allow the youngster there, Higby, the left guard, to pull around and open the lane. They'll run it again with LJ Scott. Now, Brock, oftentimes you will see teams in their game notes or in their media guides talk about the weights that players are able to bench and able to squat. And sometimes we just think that's teams kind of bragging about how strong their guys are but this group up front for Michigan you saw on tape literally the way they play is directly related to those numbers and how strong they are. Yeah, it's a power clean and a, and a squat and a press for Don Brown's crew and they roll eight of them something they could not do a season ago defensively an entire new defensive line could roll in and they don't miss a beat. Another handoff. L.J. Scott inside the 10. Hurdles down to the 5. This is only the seventh time this season that a team has been in the red zone against this Michigan defense. L.J. Scott again. Second and goal from just inside the five. And that time Jabril Peppers, who only plays 13 different positions for Michigan on both sides of the ball, was in the middle of the pile for the Wolverines. Yeah, you see his sense of acceleration, and that's why he's able to 205 pounds, little guy, to play that strong side linebacker. But this is what you want to do. You don't want to allow the great talent and athletes to go out and play in space, play in a phone booth. In fact, right below me here in our booth, Ram it down their throats. I'm hearing the fans from Michigan State seeing something they've really not seen in a month and a half. First time we see O'Connor in the shotgun. Little zone read. L.J. Scott has a lane. He's in the end zone. That's a Spartan touchdown. Second drive. One pass. Was that a Mark D'Antonio touchdown drive testing your manhood or what? Wow. Best player on the field for Michigan State has to have the best game of his career if you're going to take down number two. And number three off to a pretty good start. Welcome back to college football. You're watching the Big Ten on ESPN. Bob Oshusen alongside Brock Hewitt. Allison Williams down on the field. And it is a cauldron here at Spartan Stadium, especially after a seven-plus minute opening drive for Michigan State as they take the lead. And now number two about to get the football for the first time. Real Peppers, Jordan Lewis, deep to receive a line drive kick. This will hop down to Peppers, scoops it up at the five. And he's bottled up at the 20 yard line. Play action for Wilton Spade on first down. Pump fake, he wants the big one. Looking for Drake Harris. 
And Harris had a step just overthrown. Well, Wilton Spade, he threw an interception on his first attempt this season against Hawaii. He's only thrown one more since. And they're asking him to get on top of the football. He's a big man. He reminds me of Derek Anderson to a T. It's the number, it's the body type, the delivery. And they also said, did Tim Drevno, his coordinator, he's the best deep ball passer in America. Well, he had a shot for a touchdown there on a double move that they win, and he overshoots it. Right up the middle, a run for Davion Smith, dodging tacklers, breaking a tackle. What a run all the way out to about the 40-yard line, a gain of 20, and a Michigan first down. I'm seeing the same stunts from Michigan State this season. That's their inside linebacker dog blitz. They've run it for eight years here, nine years, ten years after D'Antonio. It's just they're not getting home. And that time it's Riley Bola, Chris Fry right in there running that stunt in the safety as well. Missed tackle, missed tackle. Tremendous run there from Davion Smith. Now it's Ty Isaac as the eye back. He takes the toss. He's got blockers out in front. A gain of seven on first down for Ty Isaac. All right, Chris. And good to see Chris Evans in there as the lone setback after he left in the concussion protocol last week in the Illinois game. Play action, though, for Wilton Spade. Rolls to his right, flips one, and he finds Devin Asiasi. And the freshman tight end has a first down. It was a violent hit that Chris Evans took last week against Illinois. Brock lost his helmet. It almost looked like his head bounced off the turf. Yeah. But able to shake it off and play in this huge rivalry game. And today. he's a wonderful one-two punch. He's got a little more speed and quickness, home run hitting ability than Smith, but you'll see four different Wolverines carry the ball today at a minimum. Jet sweep, Eddie McDoom. He's got to step down the sideline. Into the red zone goes Michigan, another true freshman. And you can hear the McDoom from the crowd here at Spartan Stadium. Plenty of Wolverine fans are here as well. And hands on hips there, Grayson Miller. That's Kari Willis again. He's beaten on the double move early. And, and there's some injuries. This is a beat-up group defensively. You're starting safeties. You're real difference makers. Demetrius Cox is out for the game. Monte Nicholson is not starting today as well. He is nicked up, and I would expect Jim Harbaugh and his crew to not feel any pity, but continue to attack those safeties as much as they can. Empty backfield. Spade over the middle. He's got Amara Darbo. A gain of eight down the 10 yard line where it would be second down and two. When you talk about playing tall, you don't want to be so upright that you're unathletic. Right? But when you're six foot six, Wilton Spade, early the season, he was sinking into a lot of his throws. Six six was becoming six two. Something that Jed Fish has really worked on. It stood out a week ago. His very best game is a Wolverine, as you see Peppers coming in the Wildcat package. Avion Smith just behind Jabril Peppers. And off to Davion Smith. First and goal. How about the response by this Michigan offense, starting from their own 20-yard line, with the crowd going wild after a terrific opening drive by Michigan State? methodically marching down to the three-yard line. Well, that's what championship teams typically do. When you get into November here, that calendar will turn, and guys get beat up. And you're going to play quality opponents that know you're familiar with. You're going to take advantage, and Pepper stays in the game. And championship teams typically respond exactly as the Wolverines have on this drive. Peppers on a straight keeper. Turns the corner at the pylon. A Michigan touchdown, and they're a point after away from the equalizer. And when you watch the third best offense scoring-wise in college football, what you see is everybody contributes, not only in the amount of touches with 19 different guys carrying it. Beautiful play by Peppers to get right to the pylon. But Chesson right out in front of that play, wide receiver. Now, that's a beautiful shot. He does his part. He seals that edge and gives Peppers, his buddy, the opportunity to show off that fantastic speed. Eight plays, 80 yards for Michigan, and we are tied at seven in the rivalry game here in East Lansing. 
Since 1953, the Paul Bunyan Trophy has gone to the winner of Michigan, Michigan State. The 64th time they have played for a really cool trophy. Stands four feet tall. It was donated by Michigan Governor G. Men and Williams back in 1953. Michigan State entered the Big Ten. And entering the end zone was Jabril Peppers. And now he's about to go back out there with a Michigan defense that I'm sure will play a bit of a chip on its shoulder after they got steamrolled on that first drive by Michigan State. Yeah, I think you're going to see some movement, some stunts, some blitzes. I don't think they're going to just sit in their base defense and let Michigan State hammer it at them. R.J. Shelton takes a knee. And now they go back to the ground with Holmes. Taco Charlton after a gain of a yard and a half. Here comes the blitz. O'Connor off his back foot. He was able to pick up three yards or so to Jamal Lyles. So once again, it will be third down and long. Delano Hill was all over Jamal Lyles. Conventional wisdom says you play a little bit of zone on third and long, especially when you've given up a couple third down conversions. But the beauty and the advantage that Michigan has defensively is they trust their guys on the perimeter immensely. They don't care what the situation is to play that press man coverage and to just batter a quarterback to hit and harass 24 sacks this season fourth in the country and in these environments Don Brown doesn't mind bringing a little heat every once in a while as well O'Connor hit as he throws somehow squeezes it to Josiah Price who reaches the ball out and he's got a first down how about that Tyler O'Connor took a shot from Ryan Glasgow and still was able to muscle the ball to the edge. The conversation in East Lansing has been a challenging one this season. They're not used to losing. They lost five games the last three years combined. It's been the seniors that have felt a lot of that weight. Mark D'Antonio saying he wants this football field to be the sanctuary for these players. But man, did he want his seniors to show up. And that's a big time play from two seniors that have been used to winning. And that's winning football again on third down. Looking for room and finding some is Gerald Holmes. It's a gain of five and a surprise change of the line of scrimmage. This offensive line for Michigan State has done a good job getting a push up front so far. Well, look at the double team block right there in the middle between the right tackle, right guard. That's Machado and Allen, two of your better offensive linemen. And it is that initial push. If you're going to play power gap football, you have got to win when you've got a double team. They do. How about the patience of Holmes? Not just L.J. Scott that can tote the ball. These running backs know to have patience in this system and let it develop. But it's that initial push that's probably the biggest surprise in this first quarter. Another carry by Holmes. He's about three yards shy of the first down as Maurice Hurst came through first for Michigan. And this should take us to the end of the first quarter with the Wolverines only having had one possession. That was a touchdown drive. But if your goal if your Michigan State is to shorten the game, could they have done a better job of that in the first quarter? No, they couldn't. And the majority of it all on the ground until they needed their seniors to make plays in the passing game. We said this was going to be an NFL-esque game. That was an NFL-esque first quarter. First drive of the game, capped by L.J. Scott from Michigan State. Jabril Peppers answered for Michigan. Tied at seven after one. In terms of time of possession, dominant first quarter for Michigan State. This is only the second possession of the football game offensively for the Spartans. Michigan has only had the ball once, and we're about to begin the second quarter. Tied at seven with a big play here. Third down and three for the Spartans in plus territory. Bob Schusen, Brock Hewitt, Wilson Williams here at Spartan Stadium. Gerald Holmes. Moves the pile. And now an interesting decision for Mark D'Antonio. Fourth down and one inside the 40-yard line. Too far to try a field goal. Too close to punt. Do you go for it? You want your defense at opening possession? Because I did. You go for it. Your chance to win this game is going to be possessing the ball and keeping it out of the hands of the third best scoring offense in America against the number one total defense and number four rushing defense in America.
Gerald Holmes spins. Is he still alive? It looks like he might be short. That second effort almost got him. Michigan gets the stop on downs. And it's a big fella inside. It's Maurice Hurst defensive tackle. That initial penetration that the Wolverines have had a hard time finding. And then Jabril Peppers shows you why he's capable of playing linebacker. And why Don Brown loves him. It's not being run at. It's when you run away, that speed comes to life and Peppers makes the play. Tied at seven after Michigan gets the stop on downs. Bob Shoes and Brock Ewart, Allison Williams here. And East Lansing, the point right now, not to look at us. That's not the interesting thing. The point is to look at the numbers that are about to scroll across the bottom of your screen. This is the challenge that Michigan State on offense and every team that plays Michigan this year has to bow up to. This is some kind of defense. They say great defense travels. I want to say for four quarters today. Because that's not necessarily been the case here for the first 16 minutes of action. Michigan has looked differently on the road than they have at home where they've been more than dominant, where they've been suffocating to the point I saw Pete Carroll this week, early in the week, and he said, you make sure you tell Jim Harbaugh that we're watching from afar and what a job he has done defensively. Well, the defense just got great field position for the offense. Leon Smith stopped at the line. Second effort, maybe a yard. Another opportunity. 7-7 here in East Lansing. And second down and nine. Jabril Peppers back in to take the snap. An end around. McDoom has a step. Eddie McDoom with blockers in front. Gets to the sideline. Finally bumped out by the Spartans inside their 30-yard line. Players formations plays. It's the ethos of the great play callers, especially at the NFL level. Get my players into a position to have success. McDoom's a freshman. He doesn't run the greatest comebacks yet or in cuts, but man, when he gets on the perimeter, is he ever dangerous? It's been fly sweeps most of the season. That time, the reverse action. And check out this formation. Saw this last week on the first touchdown of the game for Michigan against Illinois. Spade off play action. Looks downfield. Hoists one for Jake Buck. Drops it in. He holds on. First and goal at the one. Can't throw it better than that, and that's the advantage of being a 6'6 quarterback. And I think why Jim Harbaugh is going to continue to attract that position that wants to play at the next level. Big time play. I love the energy and fire out of these seniors. It should be. Haven't beaten these, this Michigan State team, Jake Button, his career. And he wants to badly. And this offense operating in efficiency level they have all season long. The toss, maybe on Smith. At the pylon. Looks like he danced inside it. That's a Michigan touchdown. Two possessions for the Wolverines, two scores, and they've got the lead. Another fancy. Mm. Want to run inside, want to run outside, want to run power, toss. 19 different Wolverines have carried the ball this year, and every one of them has done it effectively. Wonderful block out front. Khalid Hill saying, welcome to big time Big Ten football. 14-7, Michigan takes the first punch on the road from Michigan State, and they've responded. Alex's great state race, run in memory of Alex Powell, a former Michigan State student who passed away after a battle with cancer. Third year of the run, it's Michigan and Michigan State ROTC runners that leave the big house at 4.30 a.m. yesterday, and they go in shifts, they cover 64 miles, and eventually arrive at Spartan Stadium, raising funds for the Resource Center for Persons with Disabilities, during Alex's time at Michigan State, he valued that resource center because it helped him manage his illness in school. He was a Michigan State student, but Alex was treated at Michigan, so we can have, Brock, one of these big rivalries on the field that's filled with a lot of good old-fashioned dislike from a football standpoint, but it's things like that that show you what college football and college sports can be. R.J. Shelton, returnable from inside the two. 
and he gets out to about the 25. I think you've seen some of the maturity of Michigan to withstand that early blow. Here's L.J. Scott. He was the workhorse on the first possession. And he breaks out of the pot with the stiff arm. Pushed out by Delano Hill at midfield. That's not something you've seen very often. That's a couple missed tackles. That's Ben Gideon, the middle linebacker. That's DeMonte Thomas. Both of them unblocked right on the edge. But Shelton beats them both. Michigan State wants to play with some tempo. Shot play. And now a look over from Tyler O'Connor. And I think that's an opportunity to look at these safeties here. If you have a big play, a momentum play, an opportunity to come back and take a shot. But if the look isn't there, run it. They run it again with Scott. Don't you get the feeling, Brock, that this drive in particular, vital now that Michigan Huge. State's down, you want to show that that first drive wasn't a fluke against a great defense with your scripted plays That's that right. you can actually deal with adjustments and come out and do it again to arguably the best defense of college football. Yeah, there's a lot of hungry players. L.J. Scott says feed me. Jabril Peppers wants to be fed. A lot of guys want to be spoon fed today. But if Michigan State is going to do it, it's going to have to be up front and in this run game. And eventually, at some point, a play action shot off of it. But typically only if you see that single safety. You get the two high safeties, you want to continue to try to run it. Again, it's L.J. Scott. Again, he's got a crease. Inside the 30. Let's check in with Allison. Well, guys, defensive coordinator for Michigan, Don Brown, addressed his defense as a whole, and then he got in the face of his two senior defensive ends, Taco Charlton and Chris Wormley, and he basically said, I need you two to take over this game and start start kicking some tail out there and exerting your will a bit more. You can see they've been able to break a lot of runs out on that perimeter. And Allison, you are spot on right there. You're seeing it exactly right, and that time it was Taco Charlton in the senior price for Michigan State. A power run, you've got to win initially up front, and these two ends have not been held and contained the way they have this afternoon. Play action for O'Connor. Floats one to the sideline. And that's out of bounds. Jamal Lyles was the closest to it for Michigan State. And here's what we're talking about on that previous play right here. It's right on this edge. If you're going to play two safeties back here, then these guys got to set the edge defensively. And you're going to see advantage Michigan. That's a difficult one-on-one -on -one block. That's what NFL tight ends get paid a lot of money to do, to turn that defensive end. His job is to set the edge. Once again, you know, one of my favorite lines in football, ultimate team game still comes down to so many individual battles. You also said run right at Jabril Peppers. He ended up underneath Tyler Higby on that last play. Shelton brought down behind the line. There's an impact play by Ryan Glasgow, the former walk-on. One of three brothers. One already graduated, two on the team now to play for Michigan. All three walk-ons and Glasgow, a tackle for loss. He sure does. And you're expecting if you're Michigan State with all that run right at them for those Michigan State D linemen maybe to slow down just an inch and to not penetrate. But Glasgow does. He's unblocked and he's able to get Shelton in the backfield as you see Peppers be intended to. So Jabril Peppers off the field for third down and 16. spot where you might want to just get into field goal range if you can if you're Michigan State. Well said. O'Connor steps up in the pocket under some pressure. Tried to squeeze one to Felton Davis. Incomplete. This is a very difficult spot on the field to send your punt group out at the 34 yard line. But you may have no other choice. Michigan will stay play it safe defensively and one of the points of emphasis for O'Connor and D'Antonio was could he protect himself and Mark had to like his quarterback stepping up into the pocket but very difficult tight coverage to throw into as they go for the field goal so they're going to send Michael Geiger out for a 52 yard field goal which would be a career long this is not what you would think would be inside his range the senior has enough leg he's got it Senior stepping up. Number three in career points in Michigan State. Three more on the board for the Spartans. 52 yards away for Geiger. And 
Michigan has lost seven of eight in this series. And they've lost four in a row here in Spartan Stadium. Haven't beaten Spart the Spartans on the road since 2007, but that time they hold to a field goal attempt. Michael Geiger, only his third career attempt of over 50 yards, and a career-long 52-yarder. Devin Cronin, the kickoff specialist, with some hang time. And Jordan Lewis on the back pedal takes a knee. Avion Smith on first down, brought down behind the line. Ed Davis, who is just rounding back into form. Honorable mention, all Big Ten back in 2014 as a junior, but tore his ACL just before last season began. Not only had to sit out, but was granted a sixth year by the NCAA. And he got the start today. Wilton Spate looking downfield. Hit as he throws and fires a strike to Amara Darbo. All right, Chris, thanks very much. After an NFL throw by Wilton Spate, it's a first down in a diamond formation. A handoff to Chris Evans. He's got speed with the stiff arm. The true freshman to midfield. Very close to another first down. Well, you can check out our alternate angle sky cam coverage of today's game streaming live on Watch ESPN, brought to you by Microsoft Cloud. And if you're going to watch it, like I've been watching an awful lot, you're going to see Wilton Spate stand in there strong. NFL is right. NFL body, six foot six, 240. But more importantly, standing and delivering as you see him scan that field. Safety's first. Into the run. Blitz off the edge. Spate avoids. He's got a chance for a big play. Out in front. He's got Darbo inside the 10. It breaks your will defensively when you've got three runners at the quarterback. It was Ed Davis earlier that could not get home. And here's the edge pressure, the corner blitz that equally looking like Big Ben Roethlisberger standing strong. And most importantly, when you're six foot six and you can see over that entire field, you scan and you see Darbo working with you. I'll tell you what I love. I love that his ability to drop it into that bucket, and that is, again, the advantage of being an awfully big quarterback. Last year's hero, Jalen Watts Jackson, was the player that missed on the blitz. Maybe on Smith. To the five-yard line, where it will be second down and goal. Dave Sherrard was there to bring him down. And this will be the next step for Wilton Spade. He's going to say, don't put peppers on the field. I can, I can do this. I, I could keep it. He knows it. He actually ran 4-7 in high school. So you're looking at 6'6", 235, and you're not looking at a guy that is totally immobile back there. I think pretty reflective on that play that he extended for the deep shot down the field. Spade off play action. Floats one into traffic. Incomplete intended for Davion Smith. As good as Michigan's defense is in the red zone, their offense is almost as good. They've got 31 touchdowns on 41 red zone trips so far this season. Makes this an enormous third down midway through the second quarter. Spade incomplete intended for J.U. Chesson here comes the field goal group as Michigan State gets a red zone stop and that was a must I mean if you're Michigan State here you just can't fall behind double digits you just don't have an explosive offense that stop allows you to continue to play with patience offensively wonderfully read there by Kari Willis the safety he studied the plays he knew the scheme he jumped the corner out forced the incompletion Kenny Allen broke a slump, as you could see last week against Illinois. This only a 23-yarder. Right down the middle, and Michigan answers the field goal for Michigan State and pushes the lead back to seven. Our 
Jay Shelton from the goal line. Good job by the Michigan coverage team to get him inside the 20-yard line. Great pursuit by the Michigan defense as L.J. Scott not only had nowhere to run but lost three yards forced out by Mike McCray. Well, you know who it was? It was a true freshman. It was that defensive end. Sure, the rest of the buddies can come and corral the tackle, but it was Rashawn Gary Allison's point earlier that Don Brown was all over his guys and his defensive linemen to set the edge, and it took the number one recruit in America to engage the blocker to push him back, and that allowed the pursuit to come and finish for a rare tackle for loss here in the first half. Out of Paramus Catholic in New Jersey, where Jabril Peppers spent his last two years of high school. O'Connor wanted a shovel pass with a flag down, and he is brought down at the 11-yard line by McCray. We'll have to check the penalty marker. And the penalty is against Michigan State, immediately declined by Jim Harbaugh. Illegal shift. Offense, two men moving. Prior snap is not reset. That penalty's declined. Third down. Now that's a scary position to be in for a quarterback. You got the ball in your hands and there's nowhere to go and two defenders just licking their chops to take their shot and there's only so many times you can get in the third down a beautiful shot here is R.J. Shelton trying to get on the perimeter and he gets held up just enough the timing breaks down that's no man's land no opponent has had more than four third downs converted against this Michigan defense all season Michigan State already with two here in the first half but third and 15 is a different deal four-man rush long throw man-to-man -man coverage incomplete intended for Monty Badaris so now the Spartans will have to punt from deep in their own end as Jordan Lewis was running in coverage that's a man-to-man -man coverage on third and 15 they don't care and you can see a pretty good pop from O'Connor that could have been called that's definitely called at the NFL level if this is an NFL game there is no doubt that's called Hurst may have a little talking to on the sideline. Peppers, plenty of room for a return from his own 44. That's across the 50 into Michigan State territory. No buzz down. Spate under pressure. Does well to get the ball away just to avoid a sack. Demetrius Cooper all over Wilton Spade and that is the strength of a six foot six 240 plus pound quarterback that Cooper is now injured and he was not able to bring him down and we saw earlier I mean a shot right up the gut with Ed Davis literally hitting Spade in the gut could not bring him to the ground as well Jabril Peppers though in to take the direct snap a little zone read he's got room Jabril Peppers spins inside the 35-yard line with a Michigan first down. That's a gain of 15. And this group up front is just so defeated, just physically. They're just so beat up. And you, you could do this all game. If Jabril Peppers ran zone read and, and the Wildcat quarterback, I think they could do this on every single snap because there's enough options. And as Drevno said, heck, he could even throw it at times within this package. But this is a beat-up crew. You see 64 Clemens. He's a converted guard. Started the first game, four games this season, in fact. An offensive guard, and they're just having a hard time stopping the run. Now it's Karan Higdon. Down to the 30-yard line with a gain of three. Let's check in with Allison. Well, Bob, Brock, it's interesting you guys just mentioned Tom Brady because that is the film that Jed Fish, who works with quarterbacks, showed Wilton Spate this week. He always uh, cuts up different NFL examples of things he needs to focus on, and the reason he showed him that film of Brady was just what you guys were talking about, movement in the pocket, having patience, knowing when and where to move, and then also getting that shoulder back to your target. So that was a big point of emphasis this week for Spate. Well, he's nailed it. And now Shane Morris is in the game at quarterback. Sweet. The toss to J.U. Chesson. Morris out there paving the way. But up to the task that time was the defensive front led by Ed Davis for the Spartans. That's a loss of a yard and a half, and it will be third down and nine. And kudos to Mike Tressel having his guys ready to go. Did so on third down in the red zone. That's a sweep. That's the tendency, and they play it right. Only one wide out, two tight ends.
Spade back to throw. Well protected. Fires a strike. Walling off his man was Amara Darbo. He's got the first down. That's just so good. And Mark Antonio knows those are the little plays. Those are the plays that over the last three years they made. That's it. That's an in route. That's quarters coverage. They play their base defense. And over the years, when they've been so dominant, that safety is a half step quicker. And he's collisioning and forcing the punt or forcing the field field goal. And they're just a half step late here this season defensively. We also had Shalik Calhoun, Joel Heath, and Lawrence Thomas Four. rushing the passer last season. All three now in the NFL. On first down, Spade finds a crosser. It's Chesson to the 16-yard line. Down to Allison. Talking about the NFL experience for this Michigan staff, every single offensive assistant coach has NFL coaching experience, including offensive coordinator Tim Drevno, who is with the 49ers. And he said when you're in the NFL and you see teams in your division twice a year, you really learn how to switch things up. And also it helps because he knows exactly what this offense should look like when it's at its peak. And then he can take that tape and show it to his team now for exactly what the plays should look like. It's really a huge benefit, they feel. Back to Shane Morris, a quarterback, though. Jet sweep to Jabril Peppers. Out of bounds. At the 14, maybe the 13-yard line. And it looks to be a yard shy of the first down. You asked me earlier why. Why do you bring Morris in? Why, why do you run that play? You also run plays at times to set a defense up. They know the tendency that it's been a perimeter run for Morris. And that time, trying to get them to key on him, expecting him to go left. And you bring Peppers around right, always stacking your plays. That's what the elite coordinators, the elite offenses typically do. Eighth play of the drive, third down and one. Maybe on Smith. Met. Driven back. Chris Fry got there first. It will be fourth down. Does Jim Harbaugh manage the game like an NFL team here, Mike? Take the three, or do you go for it on fourth down? I think he's going to trust and believe, or he may take this clock down here. They hand it to Khalid Hill. He moves the pile. Michigan's got the first down. Elite teams have tendencies, and they have tendencies because they execute them at a very high level. Eight rushing touchdowns for Hill. Every one of them has been between the center to right tackle. And no surprise to me whatsoever, that play ran right behind the two redshirt senior offensive linemen. Now Michigan still has two timeouts. Davion Smith up the middle. Reaches the ball out, pushes the pile into the end zone. That's a Michigan touchdown. Right now, can't you? Jimmy Harbaugh talking about this offense, and he'll always credit the players, and more importantly, he'll credit the execution. You're running right into, once again, a, a stunt that has been called to take that inside run away. But Smith able to shed the tackles, move the pile. You want speed, they got it. You want power, you have it. You want a quarterback that can stand tall and deliver, you got it. And thus, you got four scores and four possessions. And is there ever a better indicator of a championship team than a rivalry game on the road where the opposition goes right down the field and scores a touchdown to start the game? Think about Michigan from that point on. They have outscored State 24 to 3, and they start the third quarter with the football. RJ Shelton in the corner inside the five. Brought down at about the 28-yard line with 33 seconds to go in the half. O'Connor will throw. And he's going to hoist one up. And it's going to be intercepted. Jordan Lewis picks it off. 27 seconds to go. Two timeouts for Michigan. Why, if you're Michigan State? I hope you're not asking me that question. I just told you you can't do that. What are the percentages here for Michigan State, in spite of the fact that you're down 14? I mean, does this show 
a sense of desperation just hoisting sure. one up. Sure. Well, and you also get blasted. Taco Charlton does a wonderful spin cycle move. The defensive end, and he puts his, his helmet right into the chest of O'Connor, forces that throw. But this is what you could not do down 14. But this is what you know this. We see this. This is what elite competition does, what Alabama does. Right? They just start to break your will, and ultimately you do get frustrated because it is so difficult to play against them. Jordan Lewis was a semifinalist for the Thorpe Award last season, as we saw seven career interceptions. So Wilton Spate with timeouts and field position. An easy pitch and catch to Darbo to the 40-yard line. And Jim Harbaugh wants to use one of those timeouts now before the clock starts again after the first down. Blitz coming for Michigan State. Wilton Spate. He throws a jump ball down towards the end zone. Batted around and incomplete. Chesson had a chance. Drake Harris had a chance. Now 15 seconds to go. And for the first time, you see Spade. He's taken a bunch of these shots. That was Andrew Dow that came through on the blitz. You drew the Ben Roethlisberger comparison yeah. earlier. And this is NFL quarterbacking. When you stand in there and you know you're going to get hit like that. And you can still put it 55 yards down the field into the end zone, give you guys an opportunity. Pretty rare. Another blitz from Michigan State. Picked up. Spate over the middle. Running to the 20-yard line is Darbo. Nine seconds to go. And the final timeout used by Michigan. And that's, and that's the cleats. Walked into the stadium with cleats. <laughs> What's well, a natural surface? <laughs> and why Harbaugh's going to... Look at him. That hit that can't slow me down. I'll tell you, the poor guy that's got to run behind him holding the headset wire, that guy has to be in shape as well. He must train during the week. So Allen made from 23. This one also from 23 yards out to try and add three more for the Wolverines before halftime. He's got it. So the interception thrown by Tyler O'Connor costs Michigan State three more before halftime. The largest lead of this series at the break for Michigan since 2006. Let's go back to Chris Cotter. It's time for the Lexus Halftime Report. Thank you. Coach Antonio, take me inside the decision to, to throw a deep ball there at the end of the half. Well, actually, we had a screen called involved, and, they, and the quarterback checked the cover, check to it. So, you know, can't check to it in that situation. You know, kids can't do it. They're throwing it up for grabs. What can you do offensively to get back to the kind of success you had on that opening drive? You know, the big play in the game right now is fourth and one. We don't get the fourth and one, and then we stall out again when we cross the 50. I think we've been running the ball effectively. You know, we've, we've been in the game. Uh, you know, we got to get off the field on third down. got to get them in the third down. They're running trick plays, doing the things that, that you know, we practiced. So you got to make a play. you got to make a play when you come off the edge with the quarterback and things of that nature. But uh, our guys are playing hard. Um, we'll get back in this thing, and uh, we got to make a punt. I mean, you got to get off the field. Coach, thank you. Thank you. You're watching the Big Ten on ESPN. There have been so many great finishes between Michigan and Michigan State. If we are to have another, it'll have to be a big Spartan comeback in the second half. Bob Wachusen, Brock York, Allison Williams here in East Lansing. Really a model of efficiency in the first half. Michigan showed you why they're a championship caliber team. Five offensive possessions. They score points on every one. They took the first punch down 7 nothing, and since then have pretty much dominated the game. They sure have. And 20, what, 27 to 3 after that first initial push by Michigan State. And Michigan starts the second half with the ball. They will start it at their own 25-yard line. And Allison Williams spoke with Jim Harbaugh. And use some hustle to get yeah, the job you done. you got to hustle if you want to talk to Harbaugh. We were Harbaugh proud of you. At the half. Thank you. I'm not sure how good my stride looked. But Harbaugh very pleased with how his defense looked in that second half, especially after that opening drive. Better against the run. But he said in the second half, they have to make sure they're good in coverage. <laughs> Expecting uh, Michigan State to take some deep shots here. And Brock, you mentioned the play of Wilton Spade, really solid in that first half. And Harbaugh very happy with uh, how he's been able to go through his progressions. Well, he took, Brock, as you talked about it, some shots 
from blitzers, from free runners, stood in there and delivered the football. And now he has a very efficient offense back on the field to start the second half. Up by 17. The toss to Ty Isaac. And Michigan State able to bottle him up after a gain of a couple of yards. Brandon Clemens moved over to help on the stop as we take a look at our first half stats brought to you by Dell. Mistake free, Brock for Michigan. Yep, but it's been the group that's running that's won 42 of the last 45 matchups. Team that ends this game with more rushing yards, and I think we're going to see an awful lot of what you just saw on first down there. I, I think Michigan wants to continue to reinforce their strength at the line of scrimmage, mix that inside and outside run, and take this game over. Isaac with blockers in front, bounces it outside. Short of the first down. So now one of the key points that we heard Mark D'Antonio talk about Allison with going off before halftime. His defense has to get some third down stops to have any chance. And they've done everything. Uh, they played a, a mix of base coverage, and their safe, safety's having collision. They blitzed, and the guys can't get home. They blitzed, and they've been free and hit the quarterback and can't impact the passer. Trestle defensive coordinator has emptied the bucket. None of it's been successful yet. Chris Evans, the tailback, the speedster, the true freshman on third and two. Play action. Spate rolls left. Long throw to the sideline. What a catch by Amara Darbo. Adding to a terrific day. That's a gain of 15 more. We saw this in pregame. It's actually Jim Harbaugh on the other end of the deep comeback routes, the play action pass. I love that you move the pocket. And this has every option. You got everyone flooding the flat. You got the crosser and Jake Butt, and then your go-to guy today, Amaro Darbo. That just shows you the confidence between receiver and quarterback that I'm going to throw it out there. I trust your catching radius to go and get anything. Play action again for Spade. Under some pressure. Flips one to no man's land and again does well to avoid the sack as Riley Bullock got there first. You and I love to talk about hidden yards in a game. That's now the fourth occasion where Wilton Spate has avoided 10, 15 negative yards. It's not just what the stat sheet shows with positive yards. This is a dead play. A young quarterback, and he's young in his experience. Just a redshirt sophomore. A young quarterback typically doesn't have that kind of awareness to avoid the negative play. That's well coached and much better to get rid of it. Spate rolls. Watch the wheel route down the sideline and throws an interception. Darian Hicks has a step. Darian Hicks can't stay in bounds. But the takeaway beautifully played as Hicks saw the wheel route, diagnosed it, intended for Karan Higdon. Did Sparty ever need this? The other side defensively doing your job and more than just your job, taking it away. Michigan State needed this so desperately. And that's one of the rare occasions where Wilton Spate didn't see it with his eyes. Harbaugh was talking to Allison how good Wilton's eyes were in that first half. And that time, that he predetermined, he just never saw Hicks. You can see it. He never saw Hicks in the back lurking, making the game-changing play. And Wilton Spate, again, threw an interception on his first attempt of the season in the opener against Hawaii. That is only his second interception since then. And it sets up the Michigan State offense with L.J. Scott. Trying to get to the edge. Maybe picked up a yard. Ben Gideon leads the team in tackles. His first year starting at that Mike linebacker spot for Michigan was there. Yeah, and talking to Jed Fish up there upstairs. Set that play up. I mean, that's one of their shot plays. You get into the positive side of the field. You've converted two third downs. Let's see if we can sneak that back out the backside if they're going to continue to cheat defensively. Even if it's called as much as you want to throw it, you still got to see it in that instance. O'Connor, end around flip. Donnie Corley has a step. Donnie Corley inside the 10. The true freshman. Sets up Michigan State first and goal at about the seven. And what a tremendous lead block here for Brian Allen, the offensive guard, the best lineman on that Michigan State crew. And look at his eyes up. Speaking of eyes up, so many times those linemen get out into space and they just want to go hit somebody. They don't have a vision to help their buddy out. Corley changed his number from nine to 29. They have to play a little defense today. 
But what a response from Michigan State. You expect anything less in this rivalry? LJ Scott can't find any room. Eventually, it's Mike McCray that brings him down, but there was no change of the line of scrimmage up front for Michigan State. He might have lost a yard. Yeah, once again, you talk about setting the edge, and that time it is so cool that just gets driven into the ground. This is where that edge has got to be set. And Michigan does there, and you can see the amount of pursuit. There he is nowhere. You want to run inside, you want to run outside, and but that is all set up that initial contact of setting a hard edge. What you hear elite defenses talk about all the time. The very best of them execute it. LJ Scott again to about the yard and a half line. And Brock, I know you said earlier, protect the football. Even a field goal so critical. To me, this is four down territory for Michigan State against this defense. After you get the momentum changing interception to only kick a field goal here, I think would be a huge momentum swing in Michigan's favor. That's as long as you don't go backwards here. And remember, the fourth best team in America getting after the quarterback and sacking the quarterback one already today. That headgear all messed up for Peppers today. I'm with you, but you cannot go backwards then in this situation. Peppers off the field on third down and goal. Same offset eye look with LJ Scott, the tailback. Scott again. Second effort. Inside the two. This time it's Maurice Hurst. At least a yard and a half away from the end zone. So what does Mark D'Antonio do on fourth and goal from inside the two? Looks like he's going for it. I agree with this decision. I don't know with the way the game has played out to this point that you can settle for three. I do too. You know I've always wanted that camera right down the line of scrimmage. Look at it. Look at Chris Wormley who was challenged earlier in this game to be more aggressive. Again, no wide receivers. They're going to try and run it again. L.J. Scott flagged down as he turns the corner and gets shut down by Jordan Lewis. Holy offense in the 70. That penalty's the fly. First down. Hands are on hips, but I like it. You and I both like it. You have a conviction about who you are and what you do best, and let's not get ourselves. They don't they don't throw and catch very well right now. They run it, and they run it pretty successfully. You go down swinging, you go down doing the best you can, but right now you're swinging it against the opponent. It's bigger, it's faster, it's more seasoned, and built for an opportunity just like this. From the four-yard line, Michigan takes over. The second time they get a stop on downs. Teron Higdon to the six, a gain of two. Let me make a case for that fourth down call that you're challenging right there. The ultimate game comes down to, I'm going to tell you, four guys right here. One, two, three, four. If it comes down to this offensive guard who's got a 100-pound advantage blocking here, and then I got L.J. Scott on the corner one-on-one. -on -one. And you just watch the execution. And that's a senior. That's a senior safety that's keeping his outside arm free that he's winning. And then the one-on-one, -on -one, my corner beats your running back. A game of one-on-ones. I've got my running back on your corner. Michigan wins. Spade from the end zone. Taking a shot for Darbo. Did he hold that in with one arm? He adds to a career-high day with maybe his best catch so far. Working on the true freshman, Justin Lane. What a day for Amara Darbo. A gain of 39 more. Can I be free to uh, share the conversation you and I had at halftime, Bob, about Michigan and how they would stack up in a playoff game against others? And you said, I, out on the perimeter, are they explosive enough? Right? Do they have enough game changers? I think they're underrated, and this guy in particular. You know, a season ago, it was the other side. It was Chesson that was their offensive MVP. Darbo just keeps getting better and better. This time, Jabril Peppers to the top of your screen, flexed out wide. They try to set up a little tunnel screen. And Demetrius Cooper jumps out to make the stop. That's a loss of at least a couple of yards. If Clemson goes undefeated,
They're oh, in the oh, for sure. No, 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 no. That's only if there is a loss. If there's a loss in the Tallahassee tonight. And you know, there's going. To, we're going to see chaos. We, we, every time we turn the month of November in college football, the last few years, we are going to see some losses, and more than likely, we're going to see them today. We're seeing it with Louisville right now. And West Virginia struggling on the road. Back to Karan Higdon, a tailback. The toss to Higdon. Speed to the outside. And that should be good for a first down. Let's see where they mark the football. Yes, past the line to gain as he picks up nearly 13. Let's take a look at those unbeatens and the number of unbeatens on the road as we talked about. Michigan, Clemson, Washington, Nebraska, Baylor at Texas. West Virginia right now struggling at Oklahoma State. And so the, many the teams. Is what, two? Yeah, that would factor in today that are having to win a game on the road. Two go down, three go down. Boise has got to go to Wyoming as well. I think most people would say that a safe bet is at least two of those undefeateds go down today. Digged in again. To the 27-yard line where he's brought down by Riley Bullock. And here's what I think the two at the top, and it's Alabama and it's Michigan to me, at the very top of the food chain right now. And we've witnessed it here outside of that one giveaway, is it's complementary football. Offense, defense, special teams. A lot of teams are electric in one face. Maybe a little limited or have a few holes in others. This Michigan team is a senior-laden team built for this run and built specifically because they can do it in all three phases. Maybe on Smith. It will be third down. And Sparty won't quit either. Too proud of program, too proud of head coach. They'll continue to play hard no matter what that scoreboard has to say. Play action for Spade. Throws one over the middle. Broken up. And now you're looking at what might be a missable field goal for Kenny Allen after that 15-yard penalty back Michigan all the way out near the 30-yard line. Jesson was the intended receiver. Grayson Miller was there in coverage. And now you're looking at a 45-yard field goal. And Jimmy and his quarterback both looking for contact with Grayson, that safety on the top of the route. Not getting the call. Career long for Kenny Allen is 47. He's got it, smooth as could be. 20-point lead for Michigan early in the fourth quarter. Michigan State about to get the football back, down by three scores. 20-point lead for Michigan. Michigan State about to get the football back, but unfortunately brought with no passing attack to speak of today. And now they're in a spot where their offense has got to put the ball in the air. R.J. Shelton, Shelton, Shelton takes a knee. And a quarterback change for Michigan State. Damian Terry takes over. And they'll run a draw play on first down. R.J. Scott gang tackled at the 32-yard line. Did pick up seven. So what does Terry Brock bring to the table? Why the quarterback's Well, he's typically the better runner. And, and he's the zone raid runner. And if you're going to get some aspect of, of that run game going, they have found success. They move the ball. They just can't do anything down in the red zone. So you're going to stick to your guns here. I think you're going to consistently still try to run the football, but I would sure like to see the pace picked up. And they run the option. Terry on the keeper. He's got a first down. But it's go time. Right? I mean, I, and I understand shortening the game, and we sure loved it in the first quarter. But that play clock to me has got to be about 20 seconds. Maximum, and i got to get up and go. And missed opportunities. Eight plays Dude. inside the 10-yard line. And you come away with no points. Draw play. L.J. Scott spins out of the arms of a tackler and gets down the sideline and gets a block. Well over 100 yards rushing now for L.J. Scott. And I'll go back to that fourth down call. That's what you were hoping to gain. Fourth and goal at the two. He still wants to be spoon-fed. And he had a one-on-one -on -one situation with Jordan Lewis. Unfortunately, 
His left guard didn't help him, but look at this one-on-one. -on -one. That's a one-on-one -on -one with a corner, and that time Channing Stribling can't do what his buddy on the other side, Jordan Lewis, did do and make the tackle. 139 yards now for L.J. Scott. First back to go over 100 against this Michigan defense since Ezekiel Elliott last year in the Ohio State game. Lewerke, Enzo, Madaris, touchdown. Good pitch and catch. That opportunity presented itself on the previous possession down in the red zone. A little hesitation there by Medeiros. Press man coverage creates enough separation. Stranger things have happened. A lot of stranger things. There's still 7.30 to go and three timeouts from Michigan State. The lead down to 13. Can you trust your defense? Or if you're Michigan State, would you think onside kick? when we come back after Monty Medeiros with his first touchdown reception of the season. Makes it a two-score game with seven and a half to go. It's a pretty battle-tested and mentally tough crew. You can't slip anything past Jim Harbaugh nope. as well, by the way. He has a hands team out there ready for any type of surprise onside kick with seven and a half minutes to go. And with that hands team group out there, Michigan State sends it deep. Jordan Lewis at the five. Brought down inside the 20 yard line. Spate, play action. He wants to throw for it. He's got a wide open Chesson, and he drops it in. First down, Michigan. And they trust their quarterback. Sure a do. first year starter, but throwing for it on third down, a gain of 23. Yeah, they sure do. And. and I don't know what the safety here is doing. Grayson Miller is back there. We just lose eyes. The number of times we talk about eyes, especially in these pro-style systems. And right there, flat-footed, Wilton Spate takes advantage. And if the Michigan story this season has been their defense, which I get it, pretty historic what they're doing on that side. It's been Jabril Peppers. I hope people start talking about Wilton Spate because he has been an enormous X factor this afternoon. Now it's Karan Higdon. Pounded down, but after a gate of six at the 46-yard line. It was last week the Jim Harbaugh. And there's our poor guy, Chris Fry, who has just taken an absolute beating. Took the shot in the jaw, shoes off, had the cramps, elbow brace, he only, has, thumb. He only has one working hand. He can't wobbly. put his own shoe back on. No. But there is Wilton Spade. Jim Harbaugh said a week ago his best game. His most complete game, he was tremendously accurate. One poor decision, one interception, and that's about it today. Pretty flawless execution and efficiency, which you've got to have at that position in this system. One left. Instead, it's right up the middle. And it will be third down again as Higdon has turned back after a game of a half yard. And now Mark D'Antonio is going to use one of those timeouts and sell out to try and get a stop with four and a half minutes remaining. Here's Shane Morris now in at quarterback on third down and about two and a half. And this is typically movement when he's in the game. There goes Chris Evans. And instead it's a trap handoff to Davion Smith. And Michigan State was ready for it. Well, and there's our big boy in the middle. He's coming to life in this fourth quarter. I mean, he is right there, nose to nose with Mason Cole, right here. And you're exactly right. You're trying to anticipate movement. And that's what the tendency has been. And big Malik McDowell says, enough's enough. I've had it. I'm tired of these Michigan guys. I'm going to toss Mason Cole, all conference caliber center, right to the ground. And the big man shows up, forces the punt, keeps this game alive for Michigan State. And I'll say it again, stranger things have happened in rivalry games. Kenny Allen, of course, handles the place kicking and punting duties. Better handle the snap here. This is the only, only the second punt for him today. And he can take all that time down. The intentional end over end kick, fair catch 
for Sowards at the 15 yard line. Only one deep safety. Lewerke rises up in the pocket and looks to extend the play. Gets loose. Lewerke all the way out to the 39 yard line before he's brought down by Delano Hill. The big explosive plays have come out. Secondary time, just on that last possession, buying time, extending the play, because in the normal framework, Michigan's got it covered up. But the ability to find that secondary play has been the big play. Lewerke to his secondary read, and now he scrambles again. Out of bounds at the 41-yard line, a gain of eight. Donnie Corley laid a block on Ben Gideon out on the edge. Is RJ Shelton breaks a tackle, makes another man miss to the 20 yard line. Bob. Bob. People thought it was over with 12 seconds to go last season. I mean, you are seven. You want to talk about pressure? Where is this pressure starting to fall? It's starting to fall on that defensive group. Lowerke looking end zone. Incomplete. Monty Medaris was looking for his second touchdown reception. Couldn't lay out for that one. It'll be second down and 10 from the 18. That does stop the clock with 2.27 to go. We had it. We could put a reel together of three or four shots here in the red zone. Just a double post move, clear the safety out, get everything you want. And the redshirt freshman just misses that throw. That ball placement that you have to have against Jim Harbaugh's man to man coverage. But I'll say you score seven here, 30 24. And you know what Michigan starts to think? Damn, we have lost seven of these last eight to these guys, and they will not go away. Here comes the blitz. It's picked up. Wide open out on the edge is Tristan Jackson. Boy, his momentum carries him out of bounds at the 13-yard line. If he could turn up field there... That was almost the perfect execution of Michigan State burning the blitz. Getting what they want. They are getting what they want. They had just got to throw it a little more accurately, have a little better protection. And that Michigan defense so dominant for 50 minutes of this game on their heels. Third down and five. Coming up on two minutes to go. Timing route for Medeiros. Looking for a flag. Now it's fourth down and five. Channing Stribling was there in coverage. And it looked like Channing Stribling leveraged that coverage very nicely. Yeah, and you don't just, I think, get a bailout call here. Yeah, there's contact. There's both of them. Got to fight back for it, though. Medeiros, and that's coaching point. You want to call? Then don't look for a bailout penalty with the game on the line in the final two minutes. Go after the ball. Go make the play. Michigan State has been here before. One for three on fourth down. Fourth and five to try and keep the game alive. That's man-to-man -man coverage. You know what you're going to get. Blitz coming. Lewerke in trouble. Down he goes. Jabril Peppers gets the sack. And Michigan gets another stop on downs. And they put this game on ice. You know what you're going to get pre-snap, it's pretty obvious. And I said to you earlier in this game, you have tendencies because you're pretty good at what you do. Those face masks are all looking at face masks. You're going to get man-to-man -man coverage. Where do you want to go? Who's going to win in man-to-man? -man? Where do you have a win? He's covered because he's got inside help. Look at every other receiver right now in lockdown mode. There is no place, no place to go with the football. And that's just the suffocating nature of this defense. Have they been pushed today? Yes. In a rivalry game, were they getting tested in ways they haven't this season on the road? 100%. But ultimately, I love the fact. Stick to your guns. The conviction that Harbaugh has to play that man-to-man -man coverage. Believe in trusting his athletes to get it done, and they do. 
He's a winner, isn't he, Bob? Jabril Peppers was the best player in high school football in New Jersey. He went to Don Bosco Prep, won two state championships, transferred to Paramus Catholic. Guess what they did? They won two more state championships just after his transfer. All he's ever done is win. You know, when I showed you the game tape yesterday, we walked through a couple different games, and there's plays where is a strong side linebacker. He's not equipped and built. But man, does he have a grit and a want to and determination. And when you're the most physically gifted player on this field, and he is, I mean, just the, the, the way that he's wired and he's built and his suddenness and everything that the scout's going to talk about. But just what has been represented today is a want to. That, 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 that's, that's built on being a champion at every level that he's been at. Ron Higdon up the middle. Very close to the first down, and most likely Mark D'Antonio will use. Psycho competitor. Michigan is one yard away from victory formation. And they may get it. Let's see where they spot the football. Looks like Karan Higdon was well short, but a second effort got him very close. Riley Bulla, the senior, continuing to play with pride in the middle of that defense. I think Jim's talking about punt. Punt formation, <laughs> what we're going to do, and what kind of punt we're going to. There's no rugby style. They don't do it this season anyway. But you're going to want to secure this snap and get it out and get it out in a hurry. Kenny Allen seamlessly gets it away. Donnie Corley makes the first man miss, but can't get away back at about the 25 yard line. O'Connor dumps one off to L.J. Scott. And he's loose down the sideline. Out of bounds at the Michigan 41 yard line with 27 seconds to go. O'Connor took another shot. And L.J. Scott's not giving up. Mark D'Antonio is not giving up. Michigan State didn't give up. They didn't come in here as a wounded two and five team and say we've got no shot. They've done things to this Michigan defense. Nobody else has done this season. Moving it up and down the field. Just the inability to capitalize in the red zone when it matter really stung them this afternoon. O'Connor under pressure across his body. Chucks one as far as he can with a flag down. And another flag thrown at the 10 yard line with 21 seconds to go. Shelton, the intended receiver. Jordan Lewis was there in coverage. There's also a flag in the offensive backfield. So two 15 yard penalties called against Michigan. That's right call. You clean it up and you get it right. And, and I think this crew today is in a lot of conversation. I think the replay booth is right. You know, you're going to naturally come into a tackle, right? And you're going to try to dip, but, but that is not the crown of the helmet leading into any forcible contact there. They get it right. And Michigan State, if they're going to get it right, has to score here in a hurry and hope for an onside kick miracle. O'Connor, back corner, reaching up to make the catch is Donnie Corley for a touchdown with one second to go. Give me a lot of what ifs. I think in the papers today and conversations following this game, what if you could have just punched it in? I'm not going to go against that fourth down run call. It was a one on one with his best player on a corner, and Jim Harbaugh's crew won. And this field goal, a possible conversation, there's no doubt about it. But to me, it was the execution of five or six plays in the red zone that they had an opportunity to really take advantage of, and they couldn't quite get it done. As O'Connor will run the option and pitches it backwards and it's scooped up and there goes to Peppers. He's going to score going the other way. And pad the Michigan lead. You can go ahead and add that to the Heisman reel because he's in that conversation. 
And he's earned a whole lot more of my respect. Antonio hates it. That's the worst thing that could possibly happen. You give up two the other way. Coming in here today, I was prepared to talk about Peppers getting run at and run on and, and ducking under blocks and going over the top of blocks and doing those things. After 60 minutes, Bob, you know, I'm convinced. I'm convinced if there's a defensive guy in college football that's worthy to get to New York City, you're not Lamar Jackson, it's not Sean Watson if he takes care of business, it's Jake Browning at Utah. But what this kid does in every phase of the game, all three of them, and the impact he can have and the love for football that you see, will be with the slip at the end, his special talent. And also, Jabril Peppers is a junior. We think this is probably his final year at Michigan. Yes. Let's not underestimate what this win means to all of these seniors for the Wolverines. That's right. Who, if they lost today, would have left Michigan without ever having beaten Michigan State. That's right. Are you prepared for November in college football? I think Michigan is. It'll be a wild ride to the finish line. Wilton Spate makes it official. The backflip from Peppers. And it's a Michigan win in their rivalry game with the Spartans. 32-23 for Allison Williams. And Brock Ewart, I'm Bob Wischusen. So long from Lansing.